little bit, I like to look at some people. Never been in Pastor Clint's presence or ever heard him preach where he didn't preach something that I needed to hear or that my spirit needed to know. Your difference in seasons is information. And I was asking the Lord what, what's going on in 2015, and we've been through a lot of attacks. And uh, personally, the church is just, God is just doing great things in the ministry. But personally, my wife and I, and God said that tonight was going to be a John 6, 20 anointing in this house. And in John chapter 6, verse 20, the disciples got in the boat. And they were heading on a 14-mile trip across the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus wasn't in the boat. The Bible said when they were three or four miles or three miles into that trip, that Jesus come walking on the water. And it says that they willingly received him into the boat. And when they willingly received him into the boat, immediately they were on the land. What I believe God's going to do tonight before you go home is remove process from your progress. And what would have taken you 11 more miles of effort because you're going to willingly shift your faith and your mind and let Jesus in the situation. God's going to remove time from what you got to get done. Somebody help me shout up in this place. Look at somebody say God's going to remove process from your progress. What it taken a year, he's going to do in six months. What it taken six months, he's going to do in a month. What it taken a month, he's going to do in a week. Because you willingly let God do it. I know somebody's watching right now. You're sitting there and your business is under attack. But God's about to do something. Because you're going to shift your faith and willingly let Jesus in on it. I believe that's what Pastor Clint brought to this house tonight. It's by divine anointing that he's here. He was here preaching in Salisbury, uh, North Carolina, this morning. Two services. I, it was Salisbury, right? I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Was it Salisbury where he was? Salisbury. There you go. Salisbury, Salisbury. You know, I'm a recover. Look, be nice to me. I'm a recovering dyslexic, okay? So help me out a little bit. It's true. It's true, Clint. <laughs> First time Clint ever preached here, he handed me a Bible and said, here, read. And I, I stumbled around, and he said, what's the matter? You can't read? <laughs> I said, well, I am kind of dyslexic. <laughs> I can write books. I just can't read them. You reckon he would have learned from that. The last time he preached here, he did it again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> handed me the Bible and said, here, read. And I said, oh, here we go again. I wasn't reading it fast enough. He said, what's the matter? You got a reading problem? I said, yeah, I already told you that once. <laughs> there, we're still good friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm excited about what God has laid on the heart of Clinton. I'll tell you something. I've watched him through the years. He's been through, you know, he, what I like about Clint, we'll let the train get through here. The rapture's happening. We'll be moving here in a little while. <laughs> this year, we're out of here. Amen. Look at somebody say, they're out of here this year. I've, I've known Pastor Clint for probably a good now 15, 16 years. And what I always liked about him was, number one, that he's always been real. He doesn't, he doesn't put on a show. He doesn't try to act like he's better than people. And I like to know people who have reached a pinnacle of success but still understand that honor goes down as much as it goes up. If you only honor up, it's sucking up anyways. The Bible says you are created with glory and honor. You honor up, you honor across, and you honor down. And that's something I've always liked about Pastor Clint. He always treats everybody with honor. The second thing is, is that I've seen him go through some personal uh, struggles. And the thing that encourages me is that he stayed in his course, he stayed in his faith, and he let God do what he needed to do, and he stayed in ministry through personal struggles and, and trials and that speaks to me because we all go through personal struggles and trials and the third thing I love about Pastor Clint Brown is that he can preach now everybody knows he can sing right if you know he can sing let me hear it 
first time I ever heard Pastor Clint sing, I sat there and I wept and I cried. I said, and I said, my God, he's anointed. Then he got up there and preached and I said, God, it's not fair. You should let him sing and not preach. Or let him preach and not sing. But why would you give him both anointings? <laughs> and so I love it. And I, I, wanted, and I want to welcome his beautiful wife, Kendall who's a roll tight, listen, she's anointed, she's a Bama fan all the way down, from all the way from Birmingham, Alabama, hallelujah, I graduated right out of Trustful High School, so we, we already got spirit, and I know he brought some friends, and all. I, I don't want to try to remember all the pastors and bishops that came here, but I know he, he has a good friend, Scott and Tyra King from Andersonville, South Carolina, Judah Church, hallelujah. And they're Clemson fans, and that's all right. We like Clemson around here, so it's all right. And it's so great to have my mom and dad sitting right up here in the front, these two teenagers, married 55 years. And pastor and hang out at the Kings Mountain Church. And then my good, good friend, Pastor Paul and Becky Wondercheck from Infusion Church, all the way from Raleigh, North Carolina. We're sitting, uh, at Clint, we're sitting him uh as our first bishop in our fellowship, actually, we're consecrating him May 3rd. So I'm excited about that. And then all the other friends. I know Brandon Holt, singer, is a good friend of Pastor Clint. Welcome to the Favor Nation. Somebody said, how'd you come up with that? Well, I heard the Bama Nation. I heard the Gator Nation. I don't even know what they call LSU. What do they call LSU? Tiger Nation or what? I knew there was liars in, LA, in Louisiana. <laughs> Well, he's got Judah Nation, I got Favor Nation, and that's way better than Bama Nation and Gator Nation. They're kingdom nations. Amen. I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to shout and holler and welcome Pastor Clint Brown, author, singer, songwriter, and a man of God to the pulpit. Hey, everybody. I call this the table tabernacle. I love your pastor and his first lady, but do you love the man of God over your life and the woman of God over your life? They are awesome people. Amen. I, I'm still waiting. I've, I've been here several times, and I'm still waiting. His anointing, you know, he's, he's tied in with, you know, uh, Dr. Murdoch and Dr. Todd, uh, you know, Kuntz and all them that, you know, they just, I hear they're giving great things away. And I just keep waiting on my boat. Father, in the name of Jesus. I walked up to somebody one time, a pastor I was preaching for, and he had an awesome car. He had just, you know, he had just had it detailed or something. And I said, brother, I said, I think God is speaking to you to give me that car. And he said, I've been walking with God for 55 years. He's never said anything stupid to me yet. <laughs> so how many are glad you're in church? I know you're not normally in church on Sunday night. So I appreciate everybody coming out. And I think I see some friends all the way from Pastor Lee Stokes' church. Good to see his administrators are here. It's great to have you guys with us. Amen. What a church over there in Greensboro, North Carolina. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's a phenomenal church there. And uh, Pastor's getting all his towns mixed up. It's Anderson, South Carolina, not Andersonville. It's... <laughs> It's not, uh, you know, it's not uh, Salisbury, it's Salisbury, Salisbury. No, you said Andersonville. So it's good to be in, it's good tonight to be in Hickory. Hickory. Oh, no, Hickory, I'm sorry. Amen. Hug three people. He made you hug people. Hug three people and tell them I'm glad you made it. Hallelujah. Well, I've got a young man that uh, is behind me on the piano, and I, I, I might sing a course or two, but Brandon, I want you to bless us tonight with something. I don't know whatever you feel like singing, because I love to hear you sing, man. And you are a blessing 
to me and to many people. And uh, you can get Brandon's uh, CD on iTunes, right? June 9th, it comes out on iTunes. Out. How can they get your CD? Uh, June 9th, it'll come out on iTunes nationally. The single's already out on iTunes called Less Than Me More. Awesome. Can you sing the single? Yeah. Is that what you were going to do? No? Uh, I can sing that. Well, brother, you want to you wanna sing what you want to <laughs> sell, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> you better learn that early. Everybody tell Brandon Holt how much you appreciate him being with you tonight. Sing, Brandon. Whatever you feel. I'm... My heart's desire is to be close to you. Nothing more to say, nothing more left to do. So quench this thirsty soul, take complete control until there's less of me and more of you, more of your power. More of your glory, more of your righteousness and holiness in my life. More of your kindness, more of your spirit, Lord. My heart's desire is less of me and more. of me and more of you oh, more of your power more of your glory more of your righteousness and holiness in my life more of your kindness more of your spirit Lord my heart's desire is less of me and more of you. I give my life, I give my soul, I am yours, take control and fully I surrender everything that I am, I place my in your hands and fully surrender to more of your power more of your glory more of your righteousness and holiness in my life more of your kindness more of your spirit my heart's desire is less of me and more of you. Can you just lift a hand to Jesus and tell him? My heart's desire is less of me and more of you. One more time, say, my heart's desire less of me so surround me oh Lord surround me oh Lord surround me 
you only know I'm glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless case and in If not for grace. How many thank God for the grace, the love? Aren't you glad you're walking in grace tonight? I have a brand new album back there uh, that I wrote for Pastor Rod Parsley. He wrote a book this year entitled The Cross. I don't know if any of you have seen his broadcast, but I took every chapter of that book for him and wrote a song for it. Uh, in fact, Brandon, I think you dropped in when I was recording this. Amazing. It's the third Alone album. And uh, some people love the Alone albums because they're just, uh, doesn't have all the music with it. It's just kind of intimate. And we have it back there. I think it'll be a blessing to your life. Amen. And so go back there and get all of that product and you'll be blessed. It's good to have my wife with me. Uh, tonight, I think you were here last time, Kendall. I came. Stand up. This is Kendall, my beautiful wife. It's good to have her with me. We're on a mini uh, uh, storm tour. Uh, we have been to Alabama preaching, and it was storming. We've been to uh, Charlotte preaching, and it's storming. And then we come here, and it's storming. And I'm telling you, I, you know, I got a bunch of songs in here about rain and. So if you really enjoy all this rain, you need to go back there and buy it. It'll be a blessing to you. Amen. You know, Pastor, when you were talking a while ago, it really made me think about something because the Bible says when you were talking about that story about Jesus when he walked on the water and got into the boat, if you'll study that chapter that you were talking about, I think it's John chapter 6 uh, you were talking about. It is, the, it is when Jesus fed the 5,000. And the Bible says that he went up into the mountain and began to pray. Am I right? That's the same story. He went up in the mountain and began to pray and looked down while he was praying and saw the disciples in the middle of the uh, sea struggling. He had told them to go there. And he came walking on the water. And if you will read Mark's uh, 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 account of that, what you were talking about, something very significant is in there. And it needs to be said to the church today. Jesus comes walking on the water and steps in the boat and he has to tell them to fear not and he looks at them and Mark said their problem was that they considered not the five loaves and the two fish. In other words, watch this, they forgot that Jesus had done a miracle right in front of them and now they're looking at a mess and don't realize, hey, if he can take five loaves and two fish, why can't he tell this storm to calm down in my life? Tell your neighbor, say, the best thing to do sometimes is to look in your rear view mirror and see what God has already done so that you can praise him for what he's about to do. Is there any praises up in here tonight? Anybody know how to shout up in here tonight? I know we got some tables in between us, but don't make me be like Jesus and turn your tables over. Somebody ought to push your table back, your chair back, and give God a crazy kind of praise, just a, a shout of praise. Now high five somebody and tell them praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him like it's already done. Amen. Thank you, Brandon. Just, just stay with me up here or whatever. Brother, you won't bother me if you jump on the B3 or whatever. That won't bother me either. Amen. I'm black. I like all the music I can get. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a birthday coming up and some, some of my friends said, man. You ought to go skydiving. I said, man, I'm black. We don't skydive. <laughs> I said, the first time and the last time I ever skydived, that's what they call the rapture. <laughs> I'm going to be being caught up, not dropped down. Come on, somebody. White folk are crazy jumping out of planes and stuff like that. You, you, missing, you missing something in life when you got to do stuff like that. Bungee jumping and stuff? Uh-uh. 
I ain't bungee jumping unless there's a pile of cash at the bottom of it. I don't know. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> Amen. I ain't doing that stuff. I don't like any of that. But I love being in an atmosphere, and I look around, and it's, it's just so awesome. You guys ought to be so happy that God has brought into your life someone that surrounds you with such awesome motivation for faith all around you. I mean, I see, I see your future. You know, I love it, Pastor. When you're preaching, you're looking at where you're going, you know. That's an awesome thing. I mean, I see things all over here, and it just, it just, it just inspires me. You know, uh, bring them, love them, train them, send them, live big or go home. I like stuff like that, man. It's just awesome. Blessed like that. I mean, embracing and receiving the grace of God. You guys have got it all around you. You are blessed. Amen. You are blessed. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, quickly. Uh, I'm going to read uh, just a portion of Scripture and then uh, give you a word. If somebody could just run up here and help me, maybe one of the ushers or armor bearers run up here and help me. Uh, no, I wasn't thinking of you. Yeah, I was thinking more of you. And take this down there. I'm going to come down. Do you ever teach down there instead of up here? You do? Is that all right? You teach all over? Okay, I'm going to come down where you all are so I can... You know, if somebody's not doing what I want, I can just hit them quicker <laughs> over the head with this mic. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers, chapter 13. The book of Numbers, chapter 13. I'm going to read three passages of or three verses of Scripture in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Before I get there, uh, I want to encourage you tonight that you have to understand that everything that God is going to do in your life is not coming to you, but coming through you. I'm going to say that again. Everything God is doing or everything God is going to manifest in your life is not coming to you. It's coming through you. Are you here? Adam, lay down, go to sleep. Why? Because I'm going to give you a wife. Where's she coming from? Out from the inside of you. It's coming from the inside of you. Are you here? Uh, Numbers chapter 13. And Caleb stealed the people, and Moses said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go against the people that they be stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report, which uh, they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the, with the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it uh, are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, and, uh, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sights as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. I want to preach just for a moment, not long, just briefly to you this thought. Get over it. Tell somebody to your left and your right, just push them and say, it's time for you to get over it. Let's see, y'all ain't, ain't, just reach up and touch somebody in front of you. You can, and just say, hey, you up there at the table in front of me, it's time for you to get over it. When, when you understand, when you understand that, when you understand that God is sovereign and God is awesome and God is powerful and you serve a mighty God, the problem with the church is, is, and I'm just telling you my perspective of it because I grew up in the church. Our problem in the church most of the time is our perspectives is, is that we are in different situations, are found in different situations, and we stand right here, and the devil is coming against us, and we're praying that God would come be for us so that we can shout about God stepping in and taking over and defeating the enemy on our on our behalf and the and the truth of the matter is is when we live in the third dimension of of, of creation when we live in God is right here and then God comes here because the enemy is right here and the enemy comes here we are living in an old covenant mentality 
See, you must understand that when you live in an old covenant mentality, you still get the benefits of the old covenant because God, the Bible says, that God will reward you according to his word. See, the problem is, is there's a group of people that's living on the left side of the Bible, while there's another group of people that have decided to move on over to the right side of the Bible. See, there's a lot of people that today are asking God to step in and make a way out of no way. And then there's some other folk on the other side that says this, that says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There's a lot of people on the left side of the Bible that's wanting God to come down and rescue them and to do something that they cannot do for themselves. And then there's another group of folk living on the other side of the Bible that's saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me see the thing is is most people the reason why they have excuses is because they don't want to walk by faith and take on the whole character of God we we are in a rescue mentality when I grew up in the church I grew up in we didn't sing songs about the power of God we didn't sing songs about the power of what was inside of us we didn't sing songs like I am strong we didn't sing songs like I am I'm, I'm, I'm mighty and I'm and 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 all of this we sang we sang escape songs we sang oh oh uh, uh, like a uh, won't it be wonderful there Having no burdens to bear. Joyously singing. Well, heart bells are ringing. Won't it be wonderful there? I'll fly away. Oh, glory, I'll fly away. When I die. Hallelujah. Are you here? We'd sing songs like, won't we have a time when we get over yonder? Won't we have a time when we get, we go sing and shout? Are you here? Y'all didn't grow up in Pentecostal churches like me. We would sing songs like that. We were, we were luggage Christians. We had our luggage in our hand and we just couldn't wait to get over there. Just over the next hill, we'll be home. I mean, songs that just absolutely put us. And the thing was, was our victory mentality was in the point when we would die. So when we die, we're going to get the victory. When we die, we're going to get the joy. When we die, we're going to be able to dance. When we die, we're going to be able to celebrate. So we had a bunch of people walking around the church with dead men's mentality sh shouting about a living God that nobody had any understanding of. And we always cried. And, you know, I, until I was about 16 years old, I thought God's first name was O. Oh, God. Come, oh, God. And move. Oh God, oh God, if you will, oh God, if you can, oh, shut up. God is omnipresent. If he moved, you wouldn't know it. He's everywhere, you idiot. I don't want, listen, I don't want God to show up because if he did, that means I'm in a place of disobedience. Like Adam, I'm separated and I'm living in the old covenant mentality. I want to understand that God doesn't have to show up because he's already shown up. He's already here. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of me. Are y'all here? And so we must understand that there are things that we have to get over. God tells the children of Israel when they're getting ready to go into the promised land, they're standing at the, at the Jordan and he says, now get thee over this Jordan. Get thee over this Jordan. This is in Joshua chapter 1. Get thee over this Jordan. And I read the whole Bible and it, they never get over the Jordan. They walk through the Jordan. So in other words, what God is saying is, whatever the enemy has put in your face, before you'll ever get through it, you got to get over it. Where y'all at? Until you get over it, you'll never get through it. 
But the moment you get over it and you start giving God praise in advance, you will find out that everything God wanted you to have, you already have. You just need to be aware of it. See, we grew up in the church where we said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. But the truth of the matter is, we didn't believe it the way it was written. We believed it the way we thought it. Because the way we thought it was, we thought now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet. Because we believed if we could have faith for it, that it just hasn't shown up yet. But if we have enough faith, then it'll show up. When the truth of the matter is that your faith is not here so it can produce something you don't have yet, your your faith is here so you can see something you ain't seen yet. But it is here. You just have to walk by faith. I'm going to preach to the left side. This is my faith group over here. Somebody shout, I believe. So I want to talk to you, uh, and I want to tell you that there are three things that are going to stop you from getting over it. There are three things that are going to stop you from getting over it. The first thing the Bible says, we're talking about the children of Israel. The first thing is, is that the children of Israel, they did not realize who they were hanging with. Write down fellowship. My fellowship has a lot to do with my future. The Bible says, I read it to you, uh, in Numbers chapter 13. Bring up, bring up verse 30 one more time for me, if you will. I appreciate you giving me those words up there real quick like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. Watch this, to overcome it, to, to get over it. But the men that went with him. Listen, you got to be careful who you let go with you. Lord, have mercy. Tell somebody, say, be careful of your fellowship. See, Jonah got put in a ship. And Jonah said, if you'll throw me over, the storm will die down. And they were scared to do it, but they threw him over. And they found out about bad fellowship. See, you can't have the wrong fellow in your ship. And then think everything's going to go smooth. you got to be careful with fellowship. And so the negativity started happening by the people that were around them. Study your Bible out and you will find out that God cannot operate outside of faith. He's got to have faith or he cannot, over, he cannot bring you over things that the enemy has putting in front of you. You must have faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you hang out with people that don't have faith, they're negative and doubtful spirits will contaminate y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying let me say it a different way let me tell it to you a different way the Bible says that there was a man that was paralyzed and he could not move but the Bible says that he had four friends that took four sides of his bed and they brought him to Jesus and when they got to the house where Jesus was they couldn't get on the inside so hang out with folk that don't let limitation keep you out and so the Bible says that these guys that he was in fellowship with went up to the top of the house pulled the roof off and let the dude down in the middle of the house and the Bible says and when Jesus saw their faith Yo, I might walk through some storms every now and then, but I want people around me that'll carry me when I can't get there by myself Look to your left and your right and make sure you're sitting by somebody that's got faith. If you're sitting by somebody quiet, you need to move to another section of the building. But if you're sitting by somebody that looks like they got a little bit of a craziness about them, you're sitting by the right person because a miracle can happen when you got crazy faith that's surrounding you. See, see, you need to understand something. The Bible says that Gideon started out with thousands. And then the Bible says that God told him, he said, go and tell everybody. If you're afraid, you can go home. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says 22,000 of the 30 ran back to the house. 
What does that say to you? Watch. 22,000 out of 30 is the majority. Gideon had more doubt and fear around him than faith. And God said, I've got to get rid of the fearless fellowship in your life. I went to pray for a woman. The doctors told her she had three days to live. Call hospice and get them and get your stuff together. Three days to live. She had cancer all through her body. She's from our church. I went into her hospital. I went to the hospital to visit her. When I walked in, there was some friends and family there. The room was dark. The shades were drawn. And everybody was... I'm not making fun of the Holy Ghost. I'm saying the atmosphere. Father, we just ask you. Lord, we just believe God. We just, I said, hey! I walked in the room and I turned the light on. And it was white like this, this fluorescent stuff. And everybody, what in the world's going on up in here? I said, what y'all doing? They said, we praying. I said, praying? Sounds like a seance in here. I said, who are you praying to? Well, we pray into Jesus. I said, no, 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 no. You came mumble to Jesus. And I said, you're praying to the wrong person. All right. Go ahead, preacher. They, they looked at me. They said, what you talking about? I said, you got to talk to the devil first. Y'all don't like that. Y'all looking at me like, no, that ain't true. Yes, it is true. The Bible says I have given you power. Watch this. The power of death and life are in your tongue. Not life and death. Death and life. Go ahead and check me out if you want to. It's in Proverbs chapter 18. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. So what you do is you step into a situation and you kill something before you tell something to live. And I looked around the room and there was about six people. And I said, how many in this room believe she can be healed? And everybody looked at me and said, well, if it's God's will. I said, you out. Another lady sitting there, she's a sister. She was a sister. She says, well, we want God's will. I said, okay, you out. And they just get, and, and they said, this is my sister. I said, get out. I said, we're about to have a miracle happen up in this room. You're going to have to get out. I felt like Jesus at Jairus' house. And I went in there. Listen, y'all hearing what I'm saying? I, they had an old, they had a old, old uh, uh, song on there playing from, from two, 1975, some old worship song, you know. Holy Spirit, come. I said, put it on a jam station, 94.5. They put it on 94, 94.5. All of a sudden, it came. Oh, yes, it's late as night. And the I said, that's it. That's it. That's it right there. That's my jam. I need that right there. I need that right there. And another lady looked at her. She stood up. She said, well, I never. I said, that's why, you, that's why you're living sick and about to die yourself. Get out. And so she got out. And they went and got the doctor. And the doctor came in the room and said, uh, sir, sir. And all of a sudden, that lady that was in the bed dying of cancer, given three days, who could barely talk she looked at lifted up her head and she looked at the doctor and she said no 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 he's okay he's my pastor she said you can get everybody else out but let him stay up in here y'all ain't saying nothing to me that was last June her name is Ramona that was last June last Sunday for Easter she walked up to me and put a hundred dollar bill in my hand and said pastor I love you I want to thank you for Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, be careful of your fellowship. Sometimes it's not you. It's the people around you that's stopping you from your miracle. As a pastor, I learned how to do this. They don't know, they don't know if I'm saying hi or bye because I don't know if they're coming or going. But I want who God wants out of my life 
fearful people. Took them down to the river. He said, make them drink. They drank. Some of them laid their weapons down. And drinking. You know what they were? Careless people. There's people in your life you better watch out. A dangerous person in your life is when somebody could care less. Because now you ain't just threatening your victory. Now you threatening my victory. And Gideon is having a fit. Because he don't understand why 22,000 are gone now, 9,700 of them are gone. And God said, if I'd have left the fearful and left the careless, you already lost the battle. Are you here? The Bible says in Numbers chapter 13, the men that went with them. And so in the old covenant, it took two in agreement. Caleb, Joshua, and Caleb are the old covenant, watch me now, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to run, I'm about to run. Joshua and Caleb are the old covenant mentality of what God can do through faith. The word of God in the new covenant says if any two of you will agree as touching the same thing. So in the old covenant, Joshua and Caleb kept saying, you agree, Josh? I agree, Kay. You agree, Josh? I agree. We agree. It's these other ten fools that we got with us. These fellowship guys here. But that's old covenant mentality. But let me tell you how bad the God is that you serve. Because when you flip to the new covenant to get over certain things, God has a new way of doing things. See, I thought when he said, if any two of you, I thought I had to look around and find somebody that would come and believe with me. But there's been times in my life when it's just been me. Are y'all here? I mean, I mean, a couple of years ago, I was laying on the MRI table, on the CAT scan table by myself. And the nurse said, you know, we can put earphones on you if you want to play some music while we do your CAT scan and do your MRI. And, and, I, and I said, okay, great. And so I put my music on in my ear and started encouraging myself in the Lord. Because in the new covenant, you don't need to find somebody to agree with you before you get your miracle. Because Jesus was talking to Peter. He looked at Peter and he said, who do men say that I am? He says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed that to you, Peter. But my father, which is in heaven. And he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. And what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. For if any two of you touching the same thing, it's the new covenant. And so I'm standing there and I'm saying, wait a minute, hold it, back up. Back the tape up. Hit rewind. I just saw something that I'd never seen before. I used to think that I needed somebody in agreement with me. And God said, you do. If any two of you touching the same thing. But I'm talking to Peter. And see, you got to understand that when he's talking to Peter, he's also talking to Simon. Because Simon is Peter. Simon was Simon before Peter was Peter. And Simon was the one that denied him and didn't think he was really going to make it happen. But Peter is the one that got the revelation and stood on the rock. So Jesus Jesus said, watch this, I'm looking at one man, but I see two. And if the Peter that I called out that stands on the rock of revelation could ever convince Simon that walked in the flesh that I'm able, if Simon and Peter will touch the same. I wish somebody would give God a crazy praise up in here. Tell your neighbor, say me, myself, and I. Look at somebody and say, why don't you get over it? I'm closing. Bad fellowship. Bad fellowship. Then the Bible says, bring back verse 31 for me. If you, oh, Lord. I don't know who's doing the words, but you're hired. And trust me, Florida's a lot nicer than North Carolina, Hickory, North Carolina. I'm sorry about that, brother. Since you ain't sowing nothing in my life, I'm going to steal it. Praise God. But, but the men that went up with him said, so watch, it ain't just, it, what, what, 
what'll stop you from getting over things sometimes is not just fellowship, it's voices. We're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Next verse 32, watch this. And they brought up an evil report of the land that they had searched under the children of Israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Watch this. Tell somebody, say, be careful of your fellowship. And be careful of the voices. Hmm. Everybody say voices. See, you must understand that the direction of your life will come directly connected to who you are listening to. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You've got to be careful who you listen to. Uh, the reason, uh, the reason, um, um, Sister Grillo, uh, Mother Grillo, First Lady Grillo, whatever I need to call you, beautiful Miss Grillo, the reason he was such a pain. Well, uh, you'd be the first because you let me finish my, my, my thought here. The reason when you gave birth to this thing <laughs> and it was painful. You heard her? Very. Thank you. Is, is not because Eve did anything wrong. It's because she listened to the wrong When she let Satan talk to her, she got distracted and she started listening to the wrong voices. Let me help y'all since I'm a preacher and, 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 and I can help you with this. Because see, we know what it's like to stand up here and, 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 and hear everybody amen us. And that's a wonderful thing in agreement with an amen and a word. But the truth of the matter is, most preachers' problems, they can have, they can have 200 people amening and have one sour-looking guy sitting in a corner somewhere. And what he is doing is speaking louder. Then all the amens that are coming forward. And so you can say, well, he ain't saying nothing. Well, what you listening to then? Why you came home saying, did y'all see? Did y'all notice? Did y'all notice that guy? Who is that guy? Boy, he had an attitude. No, no, no. What it is is his silence was saying more to you than the agreement of the congregation. And it robbed you of your joy while you're delivering a word of God because you're listening to his disapproval with your eyes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You've got to be careful what voices you listen to. Well, I don't need a preacher in my life. That's from the pit of hell. The Bible said that you've got to have a preacher in your life. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Everybody say fellowship, voices, and fear. Watch this. The Bible says when they came back, these ignorant fellowship, ten ignorant spies, they started saying stuff. And the Bible said when they spoke, watch, the people's hearts began to melt. And so now they're not just dealing with fellowship they're not just dealing with voices. Now they're dealing with focus. Because they come back and watch this. Watch this. It's important. Watch this. 
The people they're talking to, what's your name? Melissa, let me show you how powerful fellowship and voices are that creates fear or faith in your life. They're talking to people that ain't seen nothing. But they're telling them what kind of picture to put in their mind. Because the Bible says that the fear that they brought back changed the focus of the people from the land to the giants. Instead of saying to the people, there are giants in there, but hey, let me tell y'all, look here, y'all. Y'all ready? Here's this called, this called, this is called rewind. We're gonna rewind. What we rewind into. We were in Egypt. And God sent a little old guy from the, from the desert, and we walked out with the carts of Egypt. And they put gold on the carts. And then, hey, hey, come here, come here. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. We went to the Red Sea. I ain't talking about somebody's swimming pool. I'm talking about the Red Sea. And it opened up in front of us. And we walked out on dry ground and looked back and our enemy was eliminated. Wait, no, 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 no. Come here, come here, come here. You got to hear this. Duh. Look here, look here, look here. We saw fire in the night because in the desert it gets below 35 degrees. So it wasn't just to lead us. God put a fireplace over our head in the middle of the desert. And then the next day, the desert gets 100 degrees, so he put a cloud in front of the sun so it wouldn't parch us and wear us down. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. We serve a bad God. No, 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 no. Come here, come here, come here, come here. We were thirsty one day, and Moses walked over, and God said, just hit that rock. And y'all, a fountain came out, and it provided 4 million people with water. We serve a bad God. No, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. We didn't have nothing to plant in the sand. We didn't have no gardens. We didn't have no vineyards. We didn't have nothing. We just put an empty bucket outside of our tent. And every day we woke up, there was breakfast waiting on us in the morning. We sir. I expected to hear that, and I expected to hear somebody say, look here, we done been through prison, we done been through the Red Sea, we done walked through the desert, we've been fed by night and day, we've got water out of a rock. If those people think we ain't coming for our stuff, they got another thing to think about. We serve a mighty God. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor. Get over it. God already has it done. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, fellowship, voices, fear, and focus. They changed their focus and said, how's the land? Yeah, but man, you ought to see the giants. How's the grapes? Oh, you should see those giants. How's this? You should see. No, no, no. See, you've got to understand. And I'm closing. I promise it's 825. I'm hungry. Uh, I'm closing with this. Watch this. They said this. I read this to you. They said, we saw the giants. Our focus has been contaminated. Because the people hadn't seen nothing. So watch. Watch. They give them something that they can focus on. And said, watch this. You know what we're like? They ain't never seen no giants, but they had seen grasshoppers. Uh, and so they didn't even realize that the foods God was still using to prophesy. Because, because uh, whatever you need, you already. 
y'all here? See, if you'll focus on what you already have, you'll stop thinking you need anything. Wait, wait, let, let me say it again. If, let me say it, let, let, let me say it, a, let me say it a different way for people that are contemplating divorce. Uh, I thought if I got my first divorce, that by the time I got married the second time, I wouldn't have the same problems I had in my first marriage. And I just realized when I got married a second time that it's the same stuff. It's all right. She's, she's, she got over it. We're dealing with the same stuff. My stupid self, way back, I split my family up because I couldn't stand the woman I was living with. And I said, I don't care about the ministry or nothing else. And I was selfish. And she was selfish. And I said, I don't like you. She said, I don't like you. She said, well, why don't you move out? I said, why don't you get your butt out? I pastor the church. I'm this, I'm that. That's how we were living at our house. And I thought to myself, my God, if I could ever get rid of this woman and get me another wife. <laughs> See, the man that thinks the grass is greener on the other side of the fence just ain't never cut grass before. You, you, you got to understand it's the same issues on each side of the fence. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, so I deal with the same issues. I have grown, I have grown to, to have wisdom and understanding and appreciation for things that I didn't. But I could have saved my family and myself a lot of pain if I would have understood. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. If I would have understood that I already possessed what I was looking for. I just wasn't noticing it and focusing on it. Instead of focusing on what I was possessing, I was focusing sing on what I thought I didn't have but I had it all alone watch me now he says to them we are like grasshoppers the problem is when God created a grasshopper God knew he was creating an insect that had the characteristic of the ten foolish spies. So the ten foolish spies equated themselves with grasshoppers. The people thought they were talking about their size. But, the, but they didn't realize that God had created the grasshopper just so the people could see that when you hang out with the wrong fellowship and you listen to the wrong voices and you walk in fear and your focus is contaminated, you're going to end up with grasshoppers. You say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm glad you don't know because I came here to tell you. See, the unique thing about a grasshopper is if you've ever seen a grasshopper, a grasshopper has wings. He has wings, but he hops. Why are you hopping when you've been equipped? Why are you hopping through it when you've been equipped to get over it? I still got seven people just hearing what I'm saying. See, some of us in this life are struggling and stumbling through it, and we're running and we're saying, it's all right. I'm going to run and not be weary. I'm going to walk and not faint. That's all right. I don't mind runners, and I don't mind walkers, but I want to be the first group. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There's some runners in here and there's some walkers but there's some folk in here that are about to spread your wings and get over your issue how 
Let's see. Let's see. Hey, brother. Is that your little boy right there? Y'all come up here. Yeah, you, you too. The daddy. You come with him. Come here. Come on up here. Yeah, yeah. Come on up here. You and your son. Tonight, if preferably tonight. <laughs> I realize I'm in Hickory, y'all. Move a little slower. Right? Come all the way up here. Uh, uh, um, what's your name? Chad. Chad. Aiden. Aiden, how old are you? Perfect. Watch this. Uh, look at your neighbor on one side and the left side, right side, and say, neighbor, I wish you would realize you're equipped to get over it. Uh, Chad, uh, when my son Taylor was about Aiden's age, uh, maybe a little younger than Aiden, I was kind of hoping I would find me a little five or six year old because he it was five because it was the first time he was going into kindergarten. But Aiden will be cool. This will be cool. Watch this. We go to Disney World for the first time. We get at Disney World, and Disney World, if you've never been, have you ever been? All right. You understand this, that there are 50 rides in Disney World, but if you get there, you're going to ride three because, because every ride takes two, three hours just to get on the ride. And I hate Disney World. They think they're doing something smart, but I want to just kick that sign over. Whenever you walk by and it says, you are one and a half hours away from your experience. And so my son, Taylor, is we are in line. And, 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 and Chad, we're in line. And Taylor is crying uncontrollably. Now, I don't know if any of you have noticed it yet. But white people cannot beat their kids anymore. <laughs> if you put a belt on Aiden, they'll come take you to jail. Now, if black folk do it, it's all right. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Y'all act like there's racism out there, and there is, but there's also another level of racism, and I'm really not happy with it, that y'all still get to beat the hell out of your children while, y'all ain't hearing me, while white people have to go back to this time out crap. I look at my children, I say, you know, white people, look at their children, go, one, two, shoot. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I am in line, Chad. And I'm standing with my son, and I can't whip him. But he's crying uncontrollably. He is absolutely aggravated. And you know, you can't beat him in public, but you can pinch him. <laughs> Anybody ever pinched your kid? You know what I'm talking about? Pinched your kid? You know, and I tried everything, man. I pinched him. I, I, I went and bought cotton candy. I walked off, because you can walk off for an hour and come back here in the same spot. I went and got him uh, 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 ice cream. His face was all blue. I had fed him everything. I didn't, I had no idea how to shut this kid up and stop him from crying. And I mean, I'm standing there going $150 to get in this daggone place. Paid ninety dollars for his behind to be in here. Cost me probably five hundred dollars. It cost ten dollars for a water and thirty-two dollars for a hamburger. You're standing there. You're mad at everybody. You're sweating to death. You're swearing to God you'll never do it again. It's like sin. God, if you get me out of this, I'll never come back. My son has lost his mind. He's crying. But every time I, I ask him, do you want, because I'm, I'm hoping, well, hey, you want to just go on and go? No. <laughs> no, Daddy, I want to ride. And finally, Chad, I did something that God did for us. I, <laughs> I brought myself to his level take a knee Chad 
And I realized at that moment what my son had been looking at the whole day. Has anybody in here felt like your life has been like this over and over and over again? He's crying, Chad, and I've dropped down to his level, but I didn't leave him there because I wanted him to see something. And so, Chad, I put him in my arms and I picked him up and I lifted him over what he had been looking at all day. And I said to him, Taylor, look at where we're going. Are y'all hearing me? I changed his focus from in front of it so he could get over it. And when I lifted him over it, his face lit up and he started saying, Dad, that's where we're going. And I said to him, yes, we're going to that right there. But is it okay, Taylor, if I put you down? Because Daddy can't hold you for two hours. Yes, sir. I said, will you stop crying? Yes, sir. And I put him back down in the same place he was before I picked him up. And he was just walking around and I can't wait, Daddy. And we get there, Daddy. And how close are we, Daddy? And boy, can, did you see that, Daddy? And all of a sudden, my whole son's attitude changed, not because his position changed, not because he had changed places, but because he got a glance over his issue and said, that's where I'm going. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, get over it. Look past your issue. Look past your struggle. Look past your adversary. Something greater is on the other side of it. Are y'all here tonight? Stay right where you are. Whatever you're facing tonight. Help me out, Brandon. Whatever you're facing tonight. I challenge you to let your faith give you a glimpse over it. Something is waiting on the other side. And watch this. Watch this, Pastor. Watch this, Pastor Grillo. If it was a little promise... The enemy would only have to put a little obstacle. If it was a little purpose, the enemy would just have to put a little problem. If it was a little destiny, the enemy would just have to put up a little distraction. But the greater the size of your issue, I'm looking for people that are facing giant situations. If you're facing a giant situation, there's a big miracle that the enemy don't want you to see. But I came tonight to take your faith and your focus and pick you up over your foe. And say, look here, you might have to stay where you are for a while. You might have to endure it. You might have to hold on. You might have to stay for a little while and stand by faith. You might have to do all you can do to stand. And all you can do is stand. It may not happen immediately. But the time when your faith gets a glimpse of where you're going, God can put you back down where you are. And you will not complain about the situation. You'll say, I know it's a giant issue. But if you could see what I got to see. Everybody say, I'm getting over it. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Aiden. Somebody say, I'm getting over it. 
Lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands in this place. Father, I thank you for faith. Let faith arise and your enemies be scattered. Let faith arise and the fellowship that we walked with, we, we cut off tonight. If they're, if they're creating bad focus, if they're giving us fear instead of faith, Lord, we walk in favor tonight. Favor is a process. Favor sometimes takes time. Oh, I don't believe that. Oh, yes, it does. Mary was told you have favor. You've been highly favored, but it took nine months for it to happen. Sometimes favor takes time. But, Lord, I speak faith into your people right now. In the name of Jesus. And I say right now, I want you to close your eyes right now. And for the next 15 seconds, I want you to see what you're facing. I want you to see what you're facing. I want you to look at the debt. I want you to look at the issue. I want you to look at the problem. I want you to look at the, at the distraction. I want you to look at the pain. I want you to look at the disappointment. And I, I can tell on some of y'all's faces what looking at it does to you. But watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. If I tonight, right now, could give you everything you want right now and need, put your eyes on that right now and, and tell me what that does to your spirit when you start looking past your issue and into your blessing, past your problem and into your promise, past your distraction and into your destiny, past your battle and into your victory. What would you do if tonight what you're seeing in your spirit, you could wrap your fingers around and say it's done? How would you praise him if you would get what you've been believing for? How would you shout if you could get what you've been looking for? How would you act in church if you would get what you've been looking for? Because I'm telling you, it's already done. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, 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 oh. oh yes, it's done, yeah! In the name of Jesus, yeah! It's done right now, oh. Listen, y'all. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power, oh, yeah. God. You are I got I got is greater, I got is stronger, God you are higher than any other. I got is healer, awesome and power, God. You are oh yeah. And if I got is for us, then who could ever stop us? front of you it says three things that creates process watch this it says what you can see in the now it says what it's going to take for you to see in the future whatever seed you're going to plant you can see it in the now but then you've got to endure time before you see the harvest. I want everybody to take one of those envelopes and put it in your hand. And listen to me carefully. Everybody put it in your hand. Listen to me carefully.
My father, Charles, my grandfather, Charles Brown. My daddy was Charles Brown Jr. My grandfather was Charles Brown. And he died when I was seven. I was in the bed with him when he passed away. I'd stayed the night with him that night before. But I'd jump up in his truck and I would stand on the seat. That's when the trucks had one seat across the front. Remember, there were no bucket seats in the trucks. And I would stand and I would bounce off the back of the seat like that while I was standing. And I'd hold my hands up. And I'd bounce on the seat. And it would irritate my grandfather. And my grandfather would tell me, he says, boy, I'm going to throw you out of this truck if you don't stop bouncing off the back of that seat. But I'll never forget this. One day, I spent the day with him. And we planted for pear trees, pears. And man, you know, when you're a little kid, you like that because you can dig and put the plant and all that stuff. And we planted it right behind his house, pear trees. And after we were finished, my grandfather said, well, let's go to town. I'm going to buy you a, I'm going to buy you a shake or malt or something like that. So I'm going to get you something to drink. We're going to go to Dairy Queen or something like that. I'll never forget. We're driving to town. I knew nothing. I'm six years old. I just helped him plant pear trees. Right? We're driving to town. He goes, Clint. I said, yes, sir. He said, look over there. He said, you see that right there? I said, yes, sir. He said, you know what that is? I said, no, sir, Papa. I don't know what that is. He said, that's what we just planted. I said, what? He said, that's pear trees. It was on the Satig property between town and my grandpa's house. See, I got to experience what I could see and put it down there. And on the way to town, he showed me what I just did was going to look like in my future. And today, those pear trees, my grandfather died in 1969. But in 2015, those pear trees are still in the back of my grandpa's property that I planted when I was six years old with him. But it didn't take, it didn't take 40 something years. It only took 40 something seconds for me to get a picture of what I just did was going to look like in my future. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. So watch this, when those trees became pear trees, I wasn't surprised because I had already gotten a picture of my harvest. I just needed a little bit of time for it to come to pass. In your life right now is an envelope. The seed you're going to put in there, you can see with your eyes. But I'm here to tell you that the harvest that's coming out of that envelope is going to be a pressed down, shaken together, and running over blessing in your life. Now you listen to me carefully. If I plant no seed in the ground, then I need to drive by an empty lot and expect that harvest in my future. Because giving nothing brings nothing. But if I give a seed that moves my faith and put it under the soil then time goes by and I start declaring my harvest is coming my harvest is on the way I want every person in this building get a seed in your hand right now get a seed not just not just a tip get a seed in your hand what is a seed something that will produce in your future not something that will just preserve something that will produce get it in your hand if you're writing a check make it payable to the favor center church right here it doesn't it doesn't matter if you're giving by way of your credit card if you're watching my way of streaming you can give get it in your hand once you get your seed in your hand I want you to jump back up on your feet once you get in your seed in your hand and jump back up over your feet and, and I want you to come from where you're seated and I want you to lay it on this altar and as you lay it on this altar I want you to start declaring that my God is greater my, and what are you doing as you take a step you're stepping over you're stepping over fear you're stepping over 
the things in your life that have tried to hold you back. You're getting over it. Now, now, move, move, move all over the building. Move all over the building. All over the building. Come, come, come. My God. He's awesome. Awesome and powerful.